Hey guys, uh, welcome back to another Lead Feeder webinar. Uh, really super happy today to have somebody on that I've been trying to get on for a little while. I've been doing a bit of bit of chasing towards this man. I've been doing my um, my best SDR outbound cadences as of late with these webinars, trying to get more guests on and you know people that, like expand outside of my own network. I'm really happy to have today on uh, Morgan J Ingram. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, prospecting um, and how to skyrocket your connect rates. Let me give you a quick intro, Morgan, um, and hopefully I do you a bit of justice here, but I've been, you know, looking down through your experience and that, and, you know, Morgan has uh, a lot of experience on the sales side, so he's worked with a company called Terminus, which was one of the, the founding members, or the, if you're going to put ABM as a thing, our account-based marketing, Morgan worked for the company that were one of the first out there to start talking about account-based marketing. Just before this, before we got on, I, I think we, when I was in an earlier career, in my earlier in my career and in a, in, a, in a different life, we'd actually invested in Terminus. And uh, yeah, it was really interesting to see like how they were like the pioneers of ABM. And I'm sure Morgan probably learned a lot back then as well. But if you look through the years then as well, a lot of focus on the SDR role. Uh, he's, he's now working uh, for a company called uh, JB Sales. He's a sales coach there. The great thing about Morgan is he's actually gone and done the sales himself right and a lot of time for the sdr role as well like as i mentioned before the sdrs bdrs sales development reps business development reps typically junior people within an organization maybe don't get enough enough say within the organization but are, are also probably one of the most pinnacle roles within an organization to get uh to get in revenue to making sure that meetings are booked into people's calendars so morgan i've just been spouting there for a long time mate welcome welcome on today man i'm, I'm happy to be here happy to be here so, yeah, it's really great to have you, man. So um, just a couple of housekeeping things before we get started. Guys, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to pop them into the questions tab. And um, while we're running through content, we probably won't stop to answer any questions. But at the end, we do have a and a session. In the questions tab, what you can do is as well, you can, up, um, you can upvote for certain questions. So if there's a question that you like, please upvote it and we'll get to the most upvoted questions towards the end. Again, as always, we'll try to get to as many questions as possible within the time limit that we have. So um, let's take a look at, you know, a couple of things. So we wanted to focus on outbound today, and I wanted to just point out, like, why outbound is so important right now, okay? Because, you know, with the COVID-19 situation, et cetera, like, a lot of people have been pushing back saying, hey, is outbound a good thing to do right now? Does it make sense to do it, et cetera, et cetera? It 100% makes sense. So these figures I got from uh, – a friend and also somebody that we've done webinars and so with before, a guy called Michael Hansen from Grow Genie. Um, one of his customers uh, started to see these these uh, conversion rates over the past couple of months. So what they've seen is this is over 30 days. So 30 days from May versus 30 days in April. So they've seen like 2X in terms of connects that they're getting with their phone. So meetings booked, by the way. So when they're actually managed to get through to people, they're able to, they're able to get people to book in a meeting with them. Then on, as well on email, they're looking at like 18x in terms of getting those connects via email, right? And then from LinkedIn, they're seeing 2x as well. So and that's all from cold outbound, right? So the, 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 the clear message here from my side is, is that outbound is working. It's actually probably working better than ever, but it's really important that you get your message right, that you get your approach right, okay? And that's why we have uh, Morgan on today because he's gonna really help us like focus on what is working in order to get those connect rates right, okay? So if we look at our master classes so far from Lead Feeder, we've done a couple over the past couple of weeks. So we had uh, Daniel Disney and Katie Dorsey on in the past couple of weeks. Um, and we were focusing on social selling, email and phone. And now today we've got Morgan on who's going to be looking at uh, helping us increase those connects. Connects being getting somebody on the phone, making sure that somebody writes back to you via an email, making sure that people actually, once you reach out to them, that they're actually getting back to you. That's what we define as a connect. Right. So, like, just to summarize what the guys have what the guys have done over the past couple of weeks, if you didn't manage to see it, um, social selling. So, Daniel Disney, social selling expert. Um, he, he, amazing guy. You probably, if you're on LinkedIn, which I guess most of you are, have probably seen Dan somewhere on LinkedIn. The guy's a great guy, easy going, relaxed, and he knows exactly what he's talking about when it comes to LinkedIn selling. So, a couple of pointers from him is make sure that your update that your LinkedIn profile is updated and make sure it's customer focused. Make sure that you're actually speaking to the people that you want to sell to. 
So a lot of people just are on LinkedIn, but don't actually make sure that they're growing their network. His tip is to make sure that you're growing your connections by a maximum of 10 people a day, right? Don't go over 10 people. Try to keep it like really around 10. And then you're going to be, keep, you're going to be making sure that you're keeping things consistent. Um, content, right? A lot of people are afraid of posting content on LinkedIn. They don't know what to say. Typically, his advice would be say what you feel, you know? Try not to push the company line too much. Don't be pushing your brand too much out there. Push your personal brand out there. Give an opinion on something. You know, that's what people want to see. And that's what people start to interact with. First of all, get your foot over the line and just go ahead and do it. You know, there shouldn't be anything to be afraid of. If you don't get a lot of, if you don't get a lot of likes, it doesn't matter. Keep going, get the next one out, next one out. And over time, you'll start to see something build out and you'll start to understand how the algorithm works. Um, and his to, to finish on his piece of advice here is to, is to really go after industry relevant content and start you know, uh, sharing it, commenting on it, liking it. If you're going after specific prospects, again, like their content, but also comment on the content. Engage to make sure that you're getting some form of conversation with people in the industry and also people on the prospect side. So if somebody from the prospect side is posting something interesting, say, hey, that's a really interesting article. This is my opinion on that. What do you think? So you're automatically creating a connection there. From KD's side, he focused more on the on the email and, and phone side of things. So he wanted to focus more on if you're pushing out to somebody cold or from an outbound perspective by email or phone, you should be focusing on the problem. Don't ever focus on your product. Focus on the customer's problem or the or the prospect's problem. You know, typically we go very uh, we go very product heavy. Let's move away from the product. Let's look more into problem. He did a really really great session around tonality. Like if you didn't get to see this webinar, you should go back and have a look at the replay on 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 YouTube. The tonality piece from KD was hilarious. You know, I think a lot of people fell off their chair laughing because it was so real. You know, like he did this thing called the sizzle that I just remember stood out to me. You know, the sizzle was I don't know. You know, that and that's the type of thing that you need to be mentioning on on calls with prospects. You know, the tone is really important. Um, mind in the gap. Uh, where is a place within your prospects, um, you know, what your prospects are doing, where your product fits in that they're not currently doing? Look for that gap and attack that gap, right? So make it known to them, hey, your competitor XYZ is doing this. And say, this is what our product is helping your competitor XYZ do. We see that you're not doing it, but we can help you with that, right? And again, this goes back to the last point from what I mentioned from Dan as well. Stop sounding like a salesperson, start having fun, right? Nobody wants to be dealing with a hard sell, right? People buy from people. And I think like, this isn't anything new, people know this, but really when you're doing your outreach, start having a little bit of fun. Like KD showed some of the cold templates that he uses and he reached in his day to day, he reaches out to doctors, right? And one of the key problems from doctors was that there's uh, you know, people go and Google things. And when people go and Google things, they think they become a, a doctor themselves, right? And they Google and they obviously get the worst case scenario and they start writing their will basically after a Google search, right? And KD basically put in some memes into his uh, into into his emails that were that were focused on that specific problem that doctors were having, the doctor Google, you know? And he was writing his emails in such a way saying, hey doctor, I just read this thing on Google which told me X, Y, Z, therefore it must be the case. What do you think? And he got so many more connects from that, you know? And he was, because he was having fun and people recognized that. So today, as I mentioned, we're gonna be we're gonna be speaking with Morgan today about how we go ahead and cr increase those connects. And Morgan's gonna be focused on video content. So I'm really interested in seeing this. There's like, you know, a couple, I was doing a, a bit of a thing earlier just to like, you know, see, okay, like let's look for some memes that, that, that tell the situation pretty well. I used to be a salesperson. As I said, like I've been doing now sort of a sales role, like in my outreach to try to get people on for these webinars, Morgan included. And like, I also feel like I'm like, okay, how do I like do something a little bit different to like make sure that people are, are noticing me on LinkedIn, you know, and how can I do a bit of outreach? So like, for example, Morgan, I didn't do this with you, but I did it with, uh, uh, who was it the other day? I, I was I was outreaching somebody and I was out walking my dog and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna make a video of myself walking my dog right now and tell him why you should come on one of our webinars. And the guy got back to me and we're gonna do a webinar, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so like, so this thing like you know banging your head against the door. Hey, hey, hey! You know, uh, uh, let me pick up the phone again. Maybe they'll answer this time. It's maybe not the right way forward, right? <laughs> like, and then it's like you know the playbook. I think this goes directly like really well into your piece now, Morgan. Around like following this sales playbook, throw the playbook out the window. Things have changed. 
it's not like it's not like it used to be like i'm really interested in seeing what your take is going to be in terms of using video as a way to break down those doors morgan so with that i will uh, hand it over to you mate take it away awesome well thanks so much for the introduction here and the whole goal with this conversation that we're about to have for the rest of the time that we're together is to talk about how you can leverage video in your sales process as of today in an engaging way so you can engage with your buyers and then they receive that information from you and they're like, oh, okay, this, this is interesting. So what I always tell people before we even get into the conversation, you know, all I want you guys to walk away with is one, two, or three things you can go execute in your process from video, right? So you heard from from Daniel about how to leverage LinkedIn. You heard from Katie on email and his outbound tactics. We're going to talk about how you can make prospecting fun, how you can make it engaging so you can get the responses that you're looking for. And so let's then hop into that. So if you follow me for a while, or maybe you've seen a lot of content, it's like, hey, why do I keep yelling about video? Why do I keep talking about this? So I want to go into the stats of why this is important. So this is, first of all, the key element, if you guys are thinking about implementing video as part of your strategy, right? So let's let's turn to the audience real quick. Before I go over these stats, I just want to get a quick pulse. This is going to mess up the chat a little bit here, but put a one for me in the chat if you're like, hey, Morgan, I'm considering video. It's something that I want to get better at. It's something that my manager has been talking to me about. It's something I keep hearing about and I want to do it. Or you could put two and be like, Morgan, I don't really care about video at all. I think it's cheesy. I think it's gimmicky. I'm going to address I'm gonna address everybody here today. So the cheesy, the gimmicky people, I got you. The ones who want to do this, I got you. You're going to walk away being like, all right, this makes a lot of sense. So boom, we already have Holly saying doing video and thanks to me. And we're already seeing success, right? So I'm going to break down formulas. I'm going to break down how you guys can do this and walk away. That It's very simple and repeatable. So let's talk about this. I got this stat. It says viewers retain 95% of the message when they watch it in a video compared to 10% when they read it in text. So for those of you taking notes out there, this is what I would take note on. 7, 38, 55. What that means is 7% is focused on the spoken word. 38% is is focused on voice and tone. And that Normally, 45, 50%, 55% is focused on that body language, which is the 55%. So the thing is, at the end of the day, is 93% has to do with some type of verbal communication. And then obviously that 7% is just that text that you send out. So when you send somebody that voice message, they are going to remember you at the beginning beginning of that sales process and they're going to be willing to be more engaged with you so that's why i always tell people hey send out videos as part of the process so that you could get those results that you're looking for and where do you put it in the process because some of you guys are probably wondering right now you know for the ones out there you guys are probably thinking "Hmm, okay like where do i put this best way to place to put it is after the second touch. So we find that the third touch is the best place to put this. So email one, email two, normally you put that in the same thread and then email three, that's the video you would then send out. Or you can do a LinkedIn video, which we're going to talk about that here here in a minute here. But the whole thing is I want to make sure that on the third email, I send out that video, right? Again, because people are going to retain and remember me when I send out that video. So they're more engaged. Next is tactical empathy. All right, so some of you guys out there probably have heard of this name before. Chris Voss, never split the difference. I've taken his masterclass on masterclass, and it was great. And what he talks about is how we need to spark more emotion, right, and understand where that person's coming from. So think about it this way. There's not a lot of face-to-face events that are going to happen for the next year. I don't think a face-to-face is going to happen until probably the end of 2021. So if that's the case, the best way for us to have real empathy or tactical empathy, as Chris Foss calls it, is to create a video. And that's going to be the closest thing you're going to have 
to a face-to-face -face connection. Again, we're not going to have events. You're not going to be able to might, might be able to have that on-site visit. So the closest thing that you're going to be able to get to that is by creating a video for the prospect. And again, video isn't just prospecting, right? It's all other stages like re-engaging, the referrals, et cetera, which I consider is an aspect of prospecting. However, video is another way to be like, hey, this is who I am, right? Email responses have started to go are down a little bit. You know, we just saw a slide that said, hey, you know, opens may be going up, but the response have been a little bit down. And a lot, and the reason for that is because a lot of people are sending out emails, right? So when we see a lot of people sending out those emails, it's figuring out how to send those in a better way. Now, what I will suggest for all of you that are listening in here is looking at your emails. Just a couple of stats to give you all, right? Subject lines. So for those of you taking notes here, less than five words lead to more open rates when you do that for subject lines. And also when you're doing emails, look at the first four to five words. That's what's going to stand out when you send out that email. Because if you think about an email, right? When you look at my phone right here, like if you look at your email, it's normally the first four to five words that you're going to see on the mobile device that someone's going to open up the email and check it out. So you want to make sure you have the right language. The right language leads into I noticed or I listened, I saw, et cetera, all those things. So when you're sending out those emails, the reason that they're starting to go down is because there's a lot of generic automated emails, right? So make your emails more engaging by having the video in there, right? Saying, hey, I made you a video. And now people are like, oh, well, a video, I'm going to go check that out because it's different. And ultimately, when I think about prospecting, it's about interrupting people's pattern. Most people don't get videos. So if you're able to create videos for someone, they're going to engage with you more. And I have a question from over here. I, I see it. Can you explain why a video on the third touch and not before? Because if you send a video as the first touch, you're most likely going to get blacklisted, flagged, because there's normally links that you'll put in the video. So if you if you make a video as the first touch, it might not even go through and then now you're blocked by the entire domain. So don't ever send a video as a first touch. And this is me talking to different people in IT. It's just something you want to stay away from, especially if you're targeting people in security, it's not going to help you. And also the reason I don't put it as a second touch is because normally at that point, it's going to be my call. So I might do email, call, and then I'll do a video. I don't want to do email, video. It's too soon. You want to warm up the prospect a little bit. So email, call, get some engagement feel, and then you can do the video normally as a third touch. So that's the reason why there, Mo, I don't have it as the first and second touch. I want to warm up with email, call, and then a video. That's the, that's the format that I go in. So hopefully that helps answer that question. Now, call connects are down. Now, the reason that that's down, we all know that. It, no one's in the office as, as much. Right. So it's harder to get the data. It's harder to get people on the phone. So I'm now saying, hey, the video is a new version of the cold call. So think about it this way. You are pretty much doing a cold call pitch, essentially. They just so happen they can see your face now. It's pretty much it. The only difference in this. For everyone listening in, if you're two and you're like, oh, I'm skeptical, man, I work in my industry, right? And we can discuss that. For all the ones that are trying to figure out like, oh man, you know, I want to do this. It's to change the mindset. It's a different channel, yet the messaging is the same. So this is just a, a phone call and you can just see my face. That's pretty much it. And you also have to think about everyone sitting at home right now. People aren't traveling. People aren't commuting. So they have the opportunity to sit down. And like, okay, I'll watch a video. They're not going anywhere, <laughs> right? So this is a great time to do that because, again, it's interrupt people's patterns. So here's a couple other stats. 82% of the internet traffic will come from video in 2020. So, again, more people are starting to give the video. And then you see one-third of people are watching more video right now. So the future of sales, the future of prospecting is going to be revolved around video. 
you know, we're doing this webinar right now. I mean, if I okay. ask you how many Zoom calls you're on per day, you're probably like, it's probably two or three times more, right? So we're moving towards a virtual world that's gonna save us time. Again, we're gonna be doing less traveling. And because of that, it's now we have to understand what's the skills that I need to build to deliver my video to the people that I need to talk to, right? So this is why I keep yelling about video, but let's show some stats behind this, right? Before you do that, Morgan, I just want to add a couple of points there, mate, yeah. just 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 to have a bit of a chat around it, because I, I think it's, like you mentioned one thing, which I really love, by the way, is unter, un, uh, interrupting people's patterns. And I think somebody also put that into the chat. Like that's the probably the best way that I've heard it put, actually, in terms of why to use video content, because it just, it throws people off a little bit, you know, and they're, they're sort of off balance a little bit. You're going in and attacking there, you know? Yeah. It's uh, super interesting. I think as well with the times that they are at the moment, it's like it's a little bit more personal, you know? And um, it's like, it's it's super interesting. Thank you for that. Like, that's that's a really nice way of putting it. And um, just one thing on the data there, by the way, just to clarify, before I send yourself and Michael Hansen to go fight to the death against the, about <laughs> those two different data points. When Michael was referring to in those, and I should have been more clear, once you actually get the connect to actually get a meeting booked, you're more likely. So the, the chances, once you get the connect, those connects are actually turning into meetings and that the likelihood of getting that meeting is much higher. That's what I meant by that. Yep, no, absolutely. Okay. That makes complete sense there. So let's look at these two data points. And also I wanna go back on any point there. And that's really key because again, when emails first came out, everybody was looking at every single email, right? When voicemail first came out, everybody listened to every single voicemail. Now, if I ask you guys, how many of you guys look at all your emails? <laughs> Less than one percent in here. How many of you guys probably listen to all your voicemails? Probably not a lot. So the thing is, like, you have to get on the trends, which goes into my point over here. So you guys will see this on the left by the Bridge Group. They do studies on sales development and prospecting, and you'll see that there's an early adoption right now of people doing videos and sending out videos. So that means that because not a lot of people are doing it, that means that you will stand out. And you know, we've had people do this all over the globe, different industries across the board. This isn't just saying, hey, this works for me. This is just working for clients and people and reps that I talk to on a daily basis. So you're seeing right here on the left, you're seeing how, again, people are the calls, the emails, et cetera. Like people are getting those already, but the video is something people aren't doing as much. And because they're not doing as much, if you see on the right with sales loss data, you'll see that there's an increase of reply rates when there's video versus non-video. So yeah, some of you guys are wondering right now, all right, yeah, video takes me a while though, Morgan. These stats make sense. I see the increase in reply rates, but for maybe for some ones out there, you're like, all right, Morgan, this is gonna take me a while. So let, let's, bre let's break this down. All right, so you see the average video reply rate is 10%, right? So, if you're right now sitting as an SDR, AE, account manager, it doesn't really matter, and you put one, you want to use video. This is the breakdown. Take 45 minutes a day. Block it out. And then say, hey, I'm going to create five, five videos. Five videos a day. Five videos in 45 minutes. Set that bar for yourself. Then... If you do that, that's 25 videos a week. That's 100 videos a month. That should be 10 responses. And then if you have that, that's five meetings. And then over time, that's going to get better to 20, 30, 40, because you're going to continuously get better at delivering it via video. So five videos a day, not that hard of an ask. It's an easy way to set this up. And one of these things about video is try it out at least 50 times. And so that's the key thing. So Rick, what I'm talking about is, is a sales person recorded pitch video here. So we're talking strictly about a prospecting video here that I'm sending out to get someone to engage with me and to get more connects here. So this one isn't more so from a marketing perspective because that's a whole different mindset. We're talking about here, hey, we're sending out a video to a prospect to get to them to engage with us. So that, that's what I'm talking about here. So you see right here, you see the average open rates, you see the reply rates, right? You also see on the left, people are not doing this as much. So if we're looking to enter people's patterns, what ends up happening though is, what's the number one reason people aren't doing video? And number one reason is fear. Is 
I don't know what to say. I don't know how to go about this. Do I have the right equipment? What are people going to think about me? And all these things are valid. And so if you think about anything that anyone is fearful about, it always comes back to, hey, what do I do, right? Number one fear in the world, I think it still is, is public speaking, right? And a lot of it has to do is like, hey, I don't know what I'm going to say. And I also have people looking at me and I don't know how they're going to receive me once I say these things. And so once you then have gone into that, right? And we know, okay, the number one factor that people don't do videos is fear, right? Those other factors, like I said, is, hey, I don't have the right equipment or my industry may not like it. You know, those are those, are those things. But really what it comes down to is it's fear. So how do we overcome that fear? Well, it has to be in a structure. So this is the most important part here is the formula. All right. So the 10, 30, 10, this formula right here is universal. It's worth for a lot of people that I share this with. Now we got right here. Someone asked, Hey, can you record the same video and send it to everyone? I would encourage you not to do that because what's going to end up happening, especially if you send it to the people in the same company, they're going to be like, all right, this is the same generic video. Uh, I, I have seen not as much success for that versus being it personalized. So this is a way to really show your human side, this is a way to make it fun and to engage with that person from the get-go. So I each time it's 100% personalized. However, you can do this at scale and I'm about to tell you how it is right here. So Luke, I'll answer your question right here. Video length, less than 90 seconds. So I want you all to think about this. Think about your videos as a movie trailer. So what's the what's the purpose of a movie trailer? Let's talk about this. Like what what's the reason that people watch it? Why the movie trailers are created? Well, the reason that they're created is to get you interested to go watch the movie. And so when you think about creating a video, you want to think about your video as less than ninety seconds. Because when you think about a movie trailer, again, the goal is to get you to the movie, right? The movie is the sales call, right? And if we think about you watch the movie, you like it, then that's where we come with Fast and Furious 2, Fast and Furious 3, and I don't know. And they're probably going to have Fast and Furious 5,000. I'm still going to show up, right? Like, so like that's the cross sell up sell, right? So like, if we think about the videos like that, it's a lot easier, right? Because again, we're moving to a virtual world. Movie trailer. Hey, I'm, I'm interested, right? My favorite movie trailer is Inception, right? Then, cool, I go watch Inception. If they drop the Inception 2, yeah, I'm, I'm paying for it, right? So that's that's the key. So now we understand as a movie trailer, I did some research on movie trailers. I found the most successful movie trailers are around 90 seconds. However, what we've seen by being in the lab is we have 45 to 60 seconds is the optimal time that you want to create this video, which led me to then create this right here, as you see it, the formula that I came up with, which was the 10, 30, 10 formula. Now, Chris, <laughs> hey, if you want to do a deep, moody voice, that's all you. I don't know your prospects. They might think that's funny. So that that might be your thing, <laughs> you know, but, but I don't know if I suggest that. <laughs> I would 100% suggest that. I am 100% behind you doing that, Chris. <laughs> and please send it to myself and Morgan after me, please. <laughs> I would reply. I would reply for sure. So unmute Chris for the preview. So on this, Nicole, we are also talking about videos here. So 45 seconds. A you said five great videos in 45 minutes. So the real key, here's the key thing, right? I do have examples. I definitely can, I can, I can pull out when we, I don't know how I'd be able to do that, but I have examples. If you want to hit me up, Nicole, I can send it to you. But the thing is, is that don't overthink the video. That's the biggest mistake. I've made 10,000s of videos and still mess up from time to time. The whole goal is that we're all humans. Right. So nobody wants to see you have a video and you got your script. You're like, hi, I'm Morgan from JB Sales. And the re like they're going to be like, what the heck? Like, it's not going to be human. Right. So treat this as a conversation. That you would have at an event. 
That's the best way to think about this. So don't overthink the video. If you have a couple hiccups, that's fine. Now, I could send you a video where literally I'm, I mess up the person's name and I send the video, oh, man, I'm sorry. I hope I didn't mess up your name. Still got the meeting. They laughed about it and say, hey, yeah, my name is this. And, it's, and people relate to that. We as humans relate to things that are, you know, Chris put in there, that are more natural and raw. We don't relate to things that are very robotic and systematic where it's like, yes, yeah, so you, you basically just read a script. So script, it doesn't work. Script yeah. is awful. Doesn't work. So that's that's the thing. So most of we do our videos are PJs. Hey, I don't know who you're targeting. So it, it might work. I don't know. <laughs> it, it might work. So I don't, they said they want an example, Andy. I, I mean, I got one that I could easily pull out here soon, but let's go over the formula okay. so, so you guys can hear this, right? Liam, Liam, I'm gonna get to an example. I gotta explain the formula first. <laughs> Liam wants to Liam, so see the video. I got you with the video. Let me explain the formula and then we'll get to it. All right. So, all right. So, in the first 10 seconds, you need to get this person's attention, right? So, what's the point of that? So, we want to focus on triggers or a problem. Trigger means I've gone to the website, right? And I found Oh, okay. They're promoting somebody to a new position. They're like, for my instance, they're hiring sales reps. So that means they're open to doing sales training. They have a product update. So they're going to do more marketing messaging, which they're going to have to turn that into sales learning messaging, right? So I'm looking for triggers. Those are insights I can use, like merger acquisitions to prospect as that person. So I noticed something, I saw something, I was researching, and then that would be something I could use again when I talked about the email, right? That first, that first big piece. Then the problems, what that means is what, and I'm KD, I know we talked about this because he's my mentor. We talk about this a lot. He said, what are the problems that your persona is going through in this current environment? What are their priorities right now? If you don't know, go talk to customer success, right? Hey, what are our clients dealing with on a day-to-day basis? What are they looking to accomplish? And if you don't know that, right, take a sticky note and write it down. Like, what are these things that they care about? Super key that you know that, right? So also on top of that as well, once you have that first 10 seconds, this is also a key element as as part of this. So if you're taking notes, I'd write this down. You always want to say the reason for my video is. So if I was sending Andy a video and I was looking to schedule a meeting with him, I would be like, hi, Andy. The reason for my video is... And then I either talk about, I noticed that you're hiring SDRs at Lead Feeder, or I'd be like, hey, I've been talking to a lot of CMOs as of late. And one of their main priorities is to make sure their team is innovative in their messaging from a sales perspective. So their go to market strategy is strong, right? So these are things that I would be doing in that first 10 seconds. So now I got your attention. So the next part is the value proposition. So your value proposition is normally around 20 to 30 seconds. The key, man, the key thing here is that remember I mentioned that the cold call, you're just now doing videos and it's just the new format of the cold call, right? So you're just going to take the value proposition you have in your cold call and you're just going to insert it here. So it's a plug and play. You don't even have to overthink this one, right? You already have it. Put it there. And then the last 10 seconds is the call to action. Now the call to action changes here. Most people ask for time. They ask for 30 minutes, 20 minutes, 15 minutes. That's exhausting. When I think of a demo, I start to get really upset because most demos are terrible, right? When I think about, oh man, 30 minutes of my time, that's probably going to be flushed down the toilet because that sales are probably is not going to leave me in a good discovery, Right. And then when I also think about 30 minutes, it's like, oh, man, I'm going to be put in a sales cycle and I'm going to be sold immediately, right? So these are things that immediately go in people's heads. So remember what I talked about from the beginning, interrupting people's patterns. So how do you interrupt someone's patterns on the call action? So like every single part of this process, I want to interrupt people's patterns. That's my whole goal. That's how you get through the noise. You got to figure out how can I interrupt patterns every single time. So the call to action that I use is, If you feel like this is relevant and you're interested in a deeper dialogue, 
feel free to respond back to this video. Thanks for watching. That's it. So my my two, so there's two call to actions there. One is interested in a deeper dialogue. Because people are always willing to have a people want, think about it, deeper conversations, right? People want to go more in depth. People don't like the surface level and fluff stuff. They always want a deeper dialogue. So if you say, hey, are you interested in a deeper dialogue? You're going to get more engagement. Or two, you could say, are you open to learning more? And so, so I think Josh put it there. I did a webinar with Gong last week on call to actions. We talked about those different things. And so they're called interest call to actions. I like to call them collaborative call to actions. So it's immediately from the get-go, I want to collaborate with you. I don't want to sell you, right? I don't, I don't want everyone to sell you. I want to collaborate with you on, hey, I have a solution or service that can help you. So let's collaborate together to solve your problem or whatever problem you're trying to accomplish. So a collaborative call to action is more conversational, less salesy, and it's easier to deliver. And it's going to make you all way more comfortable in doing these things. Because if I say, hey, are you interested in a deeper dialogue? Then you can have that conversation. But still, so on the on the videos, I normally do not ask for the hard call to action. And then Lynn, it's not a first touch video here. It's still a third touch because my messaging again is focused on each channel. So I'm just saying something different in this video than I did in my email and my phone call. So it's you're also going to change your approach as well, Morgan. If somebody connects, if you get that connect by a call to action that you put in your first email. You're yeah. probably not going to follow up with a video to ask them to, you know, to to get them on to book a meeting. Like, if, so if your first your first email isn't going to be successful, you're going to follow up with a call, maybe connect with them, perhaps. Right. Then the next thing is going to be a video, and you're still going to have to have your call to action in that in that video. You know. Exactly. So yeah. so the so based on where you're at in the step, that could be a third or a fourth touch video, right? It just depends on mm -hmm. what you said before. And again, I always want to have that. Hey, are you open to? A, or interested in a deeper dialogue, open to learning more, et cetera. And also at the same time, but still you, you can add the hard call to actions wherever you want. I would just say have more collaborative call to actions than the hard ones. So this is the formula, right? So I'm going to show this, I'm going to show this right here just as an example. Right. And then I think I can share my, yep. I can't share my screen in here. So I'm going to play a video for you guys. Cause you guys are asking. So you guys can hear it in real time. So I'm not just like making this up. So the thing is, this is my stats right here. And you know, everyone's stats are going to be different. So earlier, someone said you can send LinkedIn videos on LinkedIn. You can. And so with that, I did, I did a test cause I wanted to see like, does this really work? And I sent 100 videos out. They were cold people that did, they were in my network, but they, I never talked to them. 40 responses, 27 meetings. You know, you could do the math there. 40 cent response rate, 27 meeting persistency rate. And, you know, within that, seven of those deals closed from those meetings. So just showing you how this all works. You have to be first degree connected to someone on LinkedIn in order to do these videos. And you have up to two minutes to do the videos. More likely, most likely you want to do these on the mobile device. And Stephanie, I recommend people to do it on LinkedIn. Your conversion rates will be a little bit higher. However, if you can't get someone on LinkedIn, then you would do it via video. And the best way to do that, I'll drop this in here for you right now, Stephanie. So if Stephanie, let's say if I was sending you a video. And but still, when you say enterprise, can you define that for me? Enterprise is different for everybody. So this is what I would do. That's my, I just dropped it in there. That's my subject line. The subject line performs really well and it gets a lot of opens. And so that's one way you could go about it. So Batil, yes, it does work with enterprise. And I had a rep the other day. They told me to schedule a meeting with Walmart by using video. And so again, I, I would think more about the messaging that you have there in terms of how you deliver that. Yeah, Rick. So the reason I asked that question is in some organizations, enterprise means something completely different. So I just wanted to clarify to make sure I was answering the question right. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share this video with you guys. And again, in this in this video that I break down, this follows the formula that I talked about. 
again, you guys are going to be able to hear it here in real time as I'm pulling up this person. And then again, you guys can have your commentary questions, whatever that is. But this one, I made a mistake on, so you guys can see how I made the mistake and then still was able to convert here. So we'll click, let's see, make sure I'm doing this. All right, let's see. All right, cool. Can everybody, can y'all, can y'all see this? All right, cool. All right, here we go. All right. Nothing happening yet there, mate. Uh, we don't have sound on it. We don't have sound on it. Video via these things are not sometimes not great. Maybe if you disconnect, best way to do it maybe perhaps would be to disconnect your speaker or for your, your mic or whatever external mic you're using or whatever. And then that would be a way to play it. Or if there's an external link to it, maybe to this video, I don't know if it's, is it, it's actually on LinkedIn, right? Tell you what, Morgan, if I don't, I'm not sure this is going to work. What we could do is if you send me that exact video, I'll put it on, uh, I'll put in a link and yep. we'll send it to people afterwards. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Cause yep. I, I think you, you've, you've done this directly on LinkedIn, right? Yeah. I did it directly on LinkedIn on this one. That's a, uh, that's a good one though. It's good that you've, uh, that you've done it directly via LinkedIn. Cause I'm sure people were asking that question as well. Is it better to do it via email, LinkedIn directly? What's your experience with doing it via, via LinkedIn directly? You happy with it? Really happy with it. Yeah, I mean, it's gotten really good responses. I mean, if you come down here, if you guys y'all can see the screen, like that's the response that I got there. So you guys can see, like in real time, like it definitely works. I think it's just a lot easier to do it. Excellent. So, Hi guys, I don't, I don't think, guys, I don't think it's gonna work properly. My apologies. There, it's uh, technology is, <laughs> you know, it's it can be a bit challenging. But uh, yeah, so so uh, what I will do is though, I'll get this video off Morgan and then what we'll do is we'll pop it into an email um, and make sure that everybody that's on the call gets it, yeah? Um, yeah, absolutely. So, so Tim, just, Tim, to answer that question, really good feedback across the board. I have a lot of responses where people tell me that they see it as something that is really engaging, something that creates humanity, something that's different. It's not boring. And that's the responses that I've seen from people that target people in IT, data, security, et cetera, whatever that is. And then to do the video, you do it through your mobile application. And all you have, all again, all you have to do is go ahead and just send it on your mobile device. Super simple to do. And they want me to do it out loud. All right, let's just do, let's just, let's say if I was talking to Andy, right? I'll just yeah, do a few Tell, me. tell just, me, Morgan. Come on. See what I got you. I got you. So, so if you're like, all right, you got to do it and put you on the spot. Like I got you. So, all right. Hold on, let me, so, let me stop sharing my screen. So people see you properly here. Cause otherwise they're just going to see the screen. All right, all right. So, so we're really, so I'm just gonna, I think I, I th if I can stop sharing my screen. Uh, so let me put you up. So I've maximized you now. Oh. There we go. All right, cool. Let's go. So hi Andy. The reason for my video is we've been talking to a lot of CMOs of as of late, and we've seen a lot of SDRs and sales reps reporting into them, and they're looking to have more creative messaging when they're prospecting. So CMOs leverage our virtual sales training that focuses on developing innovative messaging to turn their marketing messaging into sales order messaging to spark net new conversations with their prospects through this mess that we're in. So if that's relevant and insightful in any way, and you're open to learning more, Feel free to reply back to the video. Thanks so much for watching and talk soon. Here's my Calendly link. Put immediately in my calendar. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's it. That's Every great, time. man. That yeah. Good. And good. if you guys notice on that, you know, I appreciate everyone. Wait, who, who was like, yo, we got to get the video. We got to go find out. Who, who was that last? I don't know who it was. We got to call you out now. Like, you got Liam. Yeah, Liam, we got a video for you now. So there you go, Liam. So hopefully you found that to be insightful. If not, never got to come after you. But again, like, <laughs> Guys, that was super simple. Like I can do that 
literally all day long. And you notice that I didn't even personalize that at all. That was relevancy. So the biggest problem that I see right now with prospecting is everyone wants to figure out, oh, how do I personalize at scale? It's about being relevant at scale. I could send that to 50 CMOs. I could do that in a day. And they all would be like, oh, that's pretty interesting. That's me. I'm struggling with that. Let's have a conversation. And that was like, what, 30? I think it was like probably 35, 40 seconds I've got it down to now. Something like that. Yeah, I was looking yeah. at the clock there. It was around 40 seconds. Yeah. yeah. Relevancy at scale. So, Sue, I guess I do them all on my cell phone. If you want to use your laptop, though, there's, I mean, some people are dropping in some knowledge in here. Loom, right? Vineyards, trip. <laughs> Look, Kevin timed me. All right. So, Ke Kevin, Kevin, was, Kevin, Kevin was like, if, here, Kevin was like, if you go over 60 seconds, I'm reporting you and you're, you're, <laughs> you're a phony. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, tough crowd, man. Tough, tough crowd. crowd, man. They, yeah, they, yeah. Yo, they, they're going to make sure that you're coming with the heat. I like it. I like <laughs> it. But, but that's the thing, though, is that like you can, you can either use your cell phone or you can obviously use your, your video too, video application. So, Cool. But I mean, that, so that right there is how you deliver it. Again, we'll make sure to get the video to Andy so you guys can see the one that I sent and see the mistake that I made so you guys could feel like, oh, okay, like you don't have to overthink this, right? So it's all good. So that's the thing. See, Joel would even buy from you. He's not even my market. So we're, Joel and I are going to have a conversation here too, right? <laughs> but but the, here's the thing, right? That's, that's the way to go about it. I'm not saying everyone is going to have a you know 40 percent response rate you know i know people would do like 60 70 right i know markets dependent regions dependent i don't know everyone's region and market but that's the whole thing and the last thing that i'll add here is make sure that you're following up on these videos this is one of the biggest myths in connecting with people right because we want to make sure that people reply to us when we get meetings however at the end of the day most people don't follow up so here's a way to follow up and get more meetings here. So when you send a video, don't ask for any thoughts on the last video. Don't ask, don't say bubbling this back up to the top. Don't say, oh, are you hiding under a rocket? You didn't see this video. Like, don't say these things, all right? Because most people say these things and it's incredibly frustrating. So this is what we've seen to be successful with reps and clients that we work with when they're doing this video prospecting. Ask for their feedback. So let's think about this. Most people want to give feedback. Most people want to give you what their perspective is. People like talking about themselves. So when you ask the prospect for feedback, psychology standpoint, they're like, oh, okay, yeah, it was really good. It wasn't good. I'm not interested. So when you're following up on a video, I normally would wait a day after or two days and so if I sent Andy this video, right, and he decided he didn't want to respond to me, I would then follow up two days later on LinkedIn and say, hi, Andy, any feedback on my video? And most people are more willing to respond to you because that's, again, it's not salesy. I'm just asking for feedback. People are willing to give feedback. They're like, oh, yeah, Morgan, I did check it out. It was great. Or Morgan, hey, I checked it out. It was not really, didn't really like it. I'm not interested. That's, I don't care. I just need the response, right? So ask for people's feedback, not for any thoughts or blows back up to the top. Because again, that's what everyone else is doing. So why would you do that? Focus on what people aren't doing. People don't ask for people's feedback, which again, Liam says, it's no pressure. It's super calm. Like I'm not pressuring you anything at all. And again, if you want to engage with me, you want to engage. So that's the, that's the really good thing there. And for sure. Even on the feedback bit there, Morgan, as well, like, sorry to interrupt you, but getting back yeah. in touch. I had that experience lately, as I said before, like to get these webinars, I'm doing this cold outreach. And actually, I just had a quick look there who I was trying to get on. Dale Dupree, you might know Dale, right? I do. So so I, I was trying to get Dale on, right? Let, let me share my screen real quick so you can see as well, like the response that I got there, because it's interesting, right? So uh, give me just two seconds, I'll also share my screen. Uh, so if, can you see my screen here? Can you see my, <laughs> yeah? Yeah. You saw like I was out walking the dog, right? And when I was out walking the dog, you could see I showed you know, and I, I said back, I said, Loop him back here, mate. My video game needs a bit of work, you know. And he, <laughs> like this is two days out, because I was like, Oh no, I've ruined it, you know. And then because it was my first one that I sent out. 
And then he was like, oh, no, it was breaking up a bit. But uh, were you saying the July the 8th, you know? And then we've said, yeah, 8th or 9th of July, we're probably going to, we have it in the calendar for next week, <laughs> you know? So uh, that's the thing. So, like, I couldn't agree with you more, mate. It's, uh, it's, it's great. So, you know, now we're in the, the Q&A section. You know, we got about 10 minutes left. We've been we've been answering these as part of the conversation. But I want to get into a couple of these that I see. So, Rick, I send videos to people two days after they send my after I set my connection request, if I'm prospecting them. Here's why. Pattern interrupt again. You know, I talk, disrupting patterns and pattern interrupts. I talk about this a lot because it's just how you schedule meetings, right? So most people, when they get someone to accept their connection request that same day they send a novel pitch that's just terrible right it's it's like what the heck did you send and so because so many buyers get that i always wait two days keeps them in suspense right then i come out of nowhere with the video add context to that video a little maybe like a one sentence and they're like oh okay well this is something different and again most people will remember that video. Even if they don't respond that day, they always will remember that video because it's something that was different. And so that's why I wait two days. So that's the key there. And Gerard, how do you get Outlook to not block the image preview of the video? So it's also going to depend on the company. That's why I normally go ahead and do it as touch number three in terms of my my email perspective that's why i normally do it and then if you put you know you said right there if you're sending a video via email i do put it as a subject line so batila if you saw that earlier i put stephanie plus morgan dash quick video if you put video in the subject line it's a 16 percent increase in open open rates so that's why i put it there and i put quick because you need to know it's a quick video right because when i tell you hey you want to watch a video, you think about YouTube. You think about Netflix. Then you're going to be like, I don't want to watch a 20 minute video from a stranger. I don't want to watch a 10 minute video from on YouTube. So you have to put quick. Otherwise, people will just think about it as a YouTube or a Netflix. So that's the key thing there. Sue, so I believe. I believe that. You're saying, does the video match your subject line or in mails or emails? So, yes, on that same subject line I just gave. So, Carlos, I mean, the two that I, I lean on LinkedIn and email, however, Twitter, if they have an open DM, that's there. Again, I don't know everyone's market. Think about Instagram. You could, you could go in any, any DM on Instagram and send a video too. I don't know what everyone's targeting though, so I don't know what your channel is. Live where your prospects are at, right? If they're if my prospects are on Instagram, I would give you a, an Instagram strategy of how to prospect. If that's the if those my if my buyers are there, they're not. So that's why I said, hey, here's LinkedIn. If it's Facebook, I'll do videos on Facebook. I don't. The thing is, I don't get married to one channel. I don't. I get married to the process of executing these different tactics I'm telling you all about, but I never get married to one channel. If all my buyers move to Instagram, I'm gonna go to Instagram. If they all go to Pinterest, I'm gonna figure out Pinterest. That's where they're at. So I have to figure that out. So that's, Carlos, that's my answer there. Uh, we'll get the sample video. So Mo, you said follow up after submitting a quote. Uh, one thing that I would suggest is videos, not just for prospecting, it's also for overlaying on your proposals or your quotes. So if you have a proposal or quote that you're, make, that you're making and it's going to be sent to an executive and you're not able to meet with them, think about it this way. I just told you all, when people think about a meeting and it's 30 to 45 minutes, they see that as a waste of time. If you made a video on a Vidyard, Loom, Drift, whatever, and you describe the quote or the proposal in a four to six minute time frame, that then saves the executive time from sitting in a 30 to 45 meeting. You create a video, you make the champion look really great, or you're an influencer really great. All they have to do is say, hey, check out this video that talks about this solution or service I want to get. And all I got to do is watch it for four to five minutes. And they're like, yep, that sounds good to me. And now you don't even have to meet with that person and you close the deal. Saves everybody time. 
So if you're going through something right now and you're trying to get that quote, that's what I would do there. So Laura, I'm, I'm hoping you're saying my shirt. <laughs> I appreciate it. They're saying the, they're saying the t-shirt that married the process and not the channel. That's the t-shirt. So. Yeah, so you've got oh. a new T-shirt for yourself, more Hey, look, gonna whoever, makes, print it, man. whoever makes T-shirts, like you know, I, I'm about it. I'm I'm all about it. So let's see, we got <laughs> so Christine. You know, it's hard to ensure open rates, right? However, we can influence open rates, and the only way that we can do that, Christine, is by A/B testing and split testing. You know, no one has a silver bullet on a hundred percent open rate, and if they did, they they would they would be good. They'd be on an island and they would have figured it out right so when you were trying to figure out open rates you need to be split testing and a b testing to see what works and what doesn't and let's go back to another question brian so i'll let me break this down a little bit more so when i say third touch i say third email touch so Andrew, now andrew not andrew wants commission andy what's this crowd they want commissions they want to do videos on the spot <laughs> i told you man i, I did warn you yeah y'all yeah, are crazy you know <laughs> you, did, you, did. you you, you right. agreed to this mate <laughs> <laughs> it's too funny so the the key thing here is that this is how i look at this cadence right so day one it's not an email. It's not a call. This will surprise you guys. It's a LinkedIn connection request. Now, if your buyers on LinkedIn, you could dismiss what I'm saying. But if they are, LinkedIn connection request. The reason for that is I want to put a face to the name. Most people, when they see an email, when they get a call, they think it's spam. So if I can send a connection request and at least put a face to the name, they can at least be like, okay, well, this person's real. Day two, I send an email, right? And this email can be a personalized email. It could be a relevance, relevancy email, right? Relevancy at scale, like I talked about. It could be a mean email. I don't know, right? You can do whatever you want, but like that's day two. Then, so Molly, this is an interesting one. The blank note has been the most successful. I'm currently in the lab right now to see if that's still the case. Uh, but for the past couple of months, that's what's been the most successful. And that means putting absolutely nothing in your connection request. Yes. I agree with you 100 percent It's been it's it's been incredible yeah. how well that's actually worked. I'm actually it's, uh, like it's I did I just had the feeling for it. I didn't realize that did that there was any type of research on it. That's interesting. Nuts. So after that, at, so I have day one, right? Connection request. Day two, email. Day three, I'm doing a call right and then after that day five is a linkedin video to that person right if i if i want to do that or it'd be an outbound video right so that's like the first four steps right there and so what i mean by like hey it's the third touch it's normally the third outbound touch you can count your linkedin connection across if you want to but that's the really that's the big thing so that's the way to think about it. You know, if you want to dive in a little bit more detail about that, we can. Uh, but that's when I say like third touch. I think about it in that way. Perfect. And I think we'll leave it on that note, Morgan. Cool. Make I mean, sure we're really, everybody. It's. I, I think we have. I think we've managed it. Uh, it's been really great having you on, mate. It's been a really interesting conversation. I've been really enjoying diving in, sharing our screens, or going off the cuff a little bit. That's been cool, mate. It's yeah. been a little bit. Of, <laughs> no, but it, it's, it's been great. <laughs> It's been really great. And uh, big thank you for taking the time out of your day for coming to speak with us. It's been really, really uh, informative. And I guess people have gotten a lot of value out of it. I certainly have. Yeah, no, that was a ton of fun. You guys, <laughs> you, got, you guys are cracking me up. So no, I, I enjoyed doing this one. Hey, uh, tell people where they can find you, Morgan. Yeah, so it looks like people are already dropping that in uh, LinkedIn, um, but I have a sad story to tell. I'm at 30K Connections right now, and I can't accept more people and I think it's the dumbest thing of all time. So what I put in my headline is you could follow me on Twitter. Uh, so I, I made a quick pick caveat pivot, right? You know, we can't, we can't let things stop us. So I'm now on Twitter, I'm active there, uh, but I'm continuously trying to flesh out my network to bring the people in that I want. Uh, but I'm at the 30K limit. I, I really don't like it at all. And I think it's the most frustrating thing of all time. It's like, they're trying to get people to be more content creators, but now I can't have more connections. Doesn't make sense.
But again, I put it in my headline. So if you go to my LinkedIn, that's the best place to connect with me and follow me. That's where I post most of my content, but also I'm posting more on Twitter too. So those are the best two places. Perfect. Uh, just one, one last question from Rick there. Where do you go to download this video? So guys, just anybody that's been on, the video from the uh, from from the webinar it's going to be sent out directly to everybody that was on and everybody that missed it so right after this uh in the next hour you'll receive a video if you don't it's going to be live on the lead feeder youtube page uh, tomorrow morning um once again morgan much appreciated mate it's been great and uh look forward to speaking with you again soon all right everybody have a good one take it easy brother see you man Bye.